just went through that weed. You see him? Good. Stop. I got him. All right. Nice, nice job. Yeah. Oh, that's a big one. So you've just landed a potential IGFA world record. What do you do now? In this video, we'll go over the complete process of submitting an IGFA world record application. We've broken down the process from start to finish so you can focus on catching that record fish while making sure you are following the appropriate steps along the way. We have our three points to remember when you think you have a record catch. First, begin the documentation process. We want photos and videos from the moment the fish is on. Cell phones are fine, but do your best to get a clear image. The second thing to remember is to weigh the fish on solid ground. Fish weighed only on the water will not qualify with the exception of junior angler world records. It's also important that the scale has been certified within the past year. And the third thing to remember is to save the tackle. The IGFA requires you to submit the actual line and leader, if you used one, in your world record application. So if you lose your tackle, then you lose your chance at a world record. Now that we've gone over the absolute basics to submitting your record catch, let's go over the process in detail. In fact, we're going to go back to before the catch was even made. You never know when your world record catch will strike, so make sure you're prepared when it does. Familiarize yourself with the IGFA angling rules and world record requirements. Leader lengths, double lines, and terminal tackle matter when it comes to a world record catch, and regulations may vary based on fishing method. It's also important to remain in compliance with local angling laws and regulations as any illegal fishing act results in the disqualification of your catch as a potential record. If you're seeking an IGFA line or tippet class record, make sure you're fishing with the right line. Many lines will break higher than the manufacturer's stated breaking strength. If you're unsure about which line to use, give us a call and we can help. We are constantly testing lines and documenting the results. We even offer a pre-testing service for IGFA members so you can get an idea of where your line will break. You'll still need to send in the required line sample. There's no guarantee it will break the same. Any violations made during the fight will result in the disqualification of that world record application. If anyone except for the angler touches the rod, reel, or main line after the fish takes the lure or bait, the catch is disqualified. The same goes for if you fight a fish from the rod holder. So make sure you follow the IGFA angling rules during the fight to ensure your catch is eligible for a world record. These rules are available online at igfa.org forward slash international angling rules. First steps should now come pretty naturally and need to happen quickly and efficiently whether you plan to keep or release the fish. This is where our three things to remember come into play. The IGFA requires photos or videos of the angler with the fish, the actual rod and reel used to catch the fish, and the scale used to weigh the fish. Additional photos of measurements and close-up shots of the fish are also helpful for identification purposes. For all tackle length records, the fish must be released alive, and instead of taking a picture of the scale, you must include a picture of the full length of the fish on the IGFA measuring board and a close-up of the mouth and the tail position. We also recommend documenting the fish's girth and length measurements. If you are planning on catching and releasing a record, remember to respect the fish by limiting the amount of time it spends out of the water. Only handle the fish safely and briefly for documentation purposes. The second thing to remember is to weigh the fish on solid ground, meaning you're on the shore, a fixed dock, a flat, or even standing in the water. The fish also has to be weighed on a scale that has been certified within the past year. If you are planning on harvesting the fish, you simply need to find a location with a certified scale. This could include marinas, tackle shops, or even IGFA weigh stations. The IGFA encourages anglers to have their own personal scale, especially when they are planning on releasing the fish. Even if the scale isn't pre-certified, you can still use it and send it in with the world record application to be tested here at the IGFA. But it's best to have a pre-certified scale to guarantee that the scale is accurate. No estimated weights will be accepted, only weights indicated by the graduations on the scale. Our final step is to set your tackle aside. 
Before returning to fishing with that same rod and reel, remove the full length of the leader and double line still attached to 5 meters of the main line. This requirement is the same for all records caught on conventional tackle. If fly fishing, you will need to provide the full length of the fly leader in one piece including the shock tippet, class tippet, and the actual fly. Nearly half of all IGFA world record catches are released alive. While not applicable for all situations, the IGFA encourages anglers to release their potential record catches and to use best release practices when doing so. Having your own scale helps limit the amount of stress the fish undergoes and you'll be able to get the weight faster and more efficiently. Instead of suspending the fish from its mouth, you should weigh it in a sling or net. Doing this minimizes handling by the angler and better supports the fish's body weight. It's easy to do. Simply use your net or sling to weigh your catch, release it, then weigh your sling or net separately and deduct its weight from the total for a final catch weight. When documenting the catch, make sure that you minimize the amount of handling and air exposure the fish receives by only lifting it out of the water for several seconds at a time. And most importantly, be respectful of the fish and take the necessary time to revive and release the fish in good condition. We just have a few final steps to complete before your application gets sent off to the IGFA. First, complete the IGFA world record application. This is a very straightforward two-page document that requests information on the angler, the catch details, the tackle, and the witnesses. Once the application has been completely filled out, the angler must then sign the affidavit and have it notarized. Once completed, your IGFA world record application should include the original completed, signed, and notarized application, the tackle used to catch the record, and photo and video documentation included on a portable USB drive or as a hard copy. Don't wait too long after the catch because all record categories, except for all tackle, have time limits on when an application must be received by the IGFA. Until you hear back, just stand by and reach out if you need an update. Good afternoon, this is Nick. Overall, most applications are finalized within two months of being received, sometimes even faster. Once your application is received, it is reviewed by three different individuals on the IGFA staff. The leaders, double lines, shock tippets, and class tippets are measured and re-measured. Testimonies and additional photos are gathered and reviewed. It is a rigorous and thorough review process that the IGFA takes very seriously. Once approved, your record will be listed on the IGFA website and you'll receive your official letter and world record certificate in the mail. And there you have it, all the tools you need in pursuit to your first IGFA world record. For more information, be sure to check out IGFA.org or give us a call at 954-924-4247. Until then, get out and go fishing and we hope to see your world record application soon.